Hey guys, I got this Ryobi Weed Whacker here, and this is a four-stroke engine. It's got an overhead cam. It's a pretty cool-looking little motor, and you can pick these Weed Whackers up used pretty cheap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear it apart, pull the engine out, and see exactly what we're looking at here, and maybe we can come up with a good idea to do something cool with this engine. So now we've got the engine pulled out of the Ryobi four-stroke weed eater and I welded up some little brackets here to mount it to a piece of 2 by 6 because why not I guess. And I'll just kind of go through piece by piece what is actually going on with this engine because it's really a lot like any other four-stroke you'd have whether it be in a lawnmower or a car. It's just completely scaled down to this tiny little size. And before we're done with the video, we're actually going to start this little motor up um, on the bench so you can see it run outside of the weed eater. On the output shaft of the engine, this is all connected to the crankshaft, which cranks and lifts the piston up and down. But I'm only going to show you the things we can see. So on the output shaft, you've got your flywheel, which also serves as a magneto. So if you look on the side of here, you'll see little magnets here. And as that spins by this coil, creates an electromagnetic field, which will create enough electricity to create a spark. So this little thing here is a coil, which basically amplifies the voltage of that to, to create a spark, just like a static electricity spark, every time this little magnet goes whizzing by. So ideally that should happen, and it will happen. Um, right as the piston reaches the top of the cylinder and is compressed with fuel and will spark fire that down. This also serves purpose as, of course, like I said, a flywheel. So it's got a little bit of weight to it and that kind of helps just carry the momentum of the engine as it's going through those four cycles, which is um, compression, combustion, exhaust, and intake. So it's kind of two full rotations, but four strokes of the piston. This also has a timing belt. Now this is just like most any modern car that you'll have. It, it has a timing belt going from a small gear behind the fly here, flywheel here. Now I learned a pretty good lesson when I was working on this project. I have this Makita cordless impact driver, which is a total beast. I'll put a link to that in the description. It is like one of the most awesome little tools that I have. But it was so powerful and as it was whacking on impact, instead of starting the engine, it actually sheared the little pin that indexes this flywheel to the output shaft or the crankshaft. So I then tried my little starter on a cordless drill, but it just doesn't really spin it fast enough. I found the easiest way to start this is with the actual pull starter. And I wouldn't recommend any of you do this at home, but for the sake of YouTube, I will risk my hands for you guys. There's some other stuff you're gonna see on the side of this little motor. This is the carburetor. This is the throttle. So normally you'd have a little cable on the end of this that when you pull the trigger of the weed whacker, it goes and it will open just a little, normally it's a butterfly valve, so just a little plate that goes open and closed, but this one has kind of a little, um, like a tube with a hole in it. When you go full throttle, the hole aligns with the intake of the carburetor and lets more air in, and you've also got a little needle to let a little bit more fuel in to help balance that whole thing out. On this side, we've got our muffler, nothing nothing new there. 
And on the bottom of this engine, we've got our oil pan. So this holds our oil because it's a four stroke. It does have to maintain oil in it. It's not supposed to be burning oil when it's running. Of course, this one's a little smoky. You can tell it is burning a little bit of oil. Um, but the thing is, because it's a four stroke, you can't really run it upside down like you can a two stroke or this oil from the oil pan will dump up into the cylinder. Now we'll pop the valve cover off so you can see inside there. So with the valve cover off, you can see these little rockers here that go on to the, the intake and the exhaust valve. So you've got your exhaust valve here that every time that opens, it opens a little passageway to exhaust the, the smoke and, unburnt, or and burnt gases out. Here you've got your intake valve. So we'll kind of go cycle by cycle here. So you'll see as I turn this, you've got exhaust. So as soon as the exhaust stroke finishes, the intake valve opens, closes. Now both valves are closed. Now this will be compression. So the piston's going up, and then the piston will go down, which will be your combustion, and then the cycle will start completely over again. Exhaust the extra fumes out, intake, compression, combustion. And you see how these rockers are moving here based on this little cam. So it's got kind of an offset lobe on it that will lift, which rocks this just like a teeter-totter to push on these valves that have big valve springs on them. Down here you'll see the wires for the kill switch and all these do is go directly to the coil. And I think all this is really doing is just shorting out the coil when you flick the kill switch. So what I'll do to, to shut this engine off is I've got a little jumper here and I can jump these two wires together. It'll shut it right off, no problem. But like I said, you can always choke it off if for some reason you, I don't know, couldn't shut it off this way. So now we'll go ahead and we'll get this engine started up so you can see it run and we're going to we're also going to remove the valve cover while it's running which I wouldn't recommend doing but since I don't care about this engine at all I'm going to pull it off and we'll see those valves in action while it's running.
hope you guys liked this video. If you have any comments about it, be sure to mention them in the comments section of the video and I'll do my best to try to respond. And if you like little how-to projects like this or engine related, um, just anything mechanical, be sure to subscribe to my channel by clicking the little subscribe button below and click the bell to be notified for future videos. Thanks for watching.